Advance Wars is a game series about banging infantry into a wall until you win. Okay, well it's about more than just that, but saying it's a turn-based grid strategy based around area control, unit matchups, and resource management isn't something that really rolls off the tongue very well. It's got a bright cast of characters and a story that exists. But what if it was different? But not. But different. But Advance Wars Days of Ruin is one that defies series conventions, the art style, the CO, the Geneva Convention. It's not often talked about, just for the simple reason that it's so different from the others. With Orange Star, you got multiple games for missions, metas, and general characters. With Rubenel, one game, four COs, and a gameplay style that's completely different from every other game in the series. What do you even have to talk about if it's not just that one game in those specific missions? In terms of quality, it's it's on par. It's the same as every Advance Wars, lacking in some, but making up for with others. I want to talk about it. Let's start out with the biggest thing people think about when they look at this game. The difference in art style. And honestly, I get it. Look at the battlefield of a dual strike map. I get it. Change is hard. These colors are soft. It's 2008. Everything is good. What could go wrong? In some areas, it looks good. And in others, it looks much, much worse. At least it's not Shadow Dragon, because Intelligent Systems in 2008 was not the peak of graphic design. Honestly, Shadow Dragon isn't that bad, it just doesn't hold up being upsized like this. What I'm not going to give massive leeway for is the character design. These character designs, um, are not good. I mean, just think about the original characters in Advance Wars. Out of your friends, which are you? Truck freak crazy ass. The fighter. Now think about the characters in Days of Ruin. Out of your friends, which are you? The fighter. The fighter. The fighter. The fighter. The designs don't really stand out in any way, and it kind of sucks. Back in Advance Wars, you can tell the different designs are military, but they stand out in such a way that you could tell what their personalities are. Andy was a mechanic, Sensei is a paratrooper, and Jake is from the mid-2000s. The only character designs that stand out even in a notable aspect in this game is IDS, and that's only because they're a non-military faction, which means the designers can go ham with just the quality of the design. Not even saying that these are, like, distinguishable in any way, just that they're different. At least, they're recognizable. We play as Will, the third of our Advance Wars protagonists with four letters in their names. Everybody is dead. Update, everybody is not dead. Update, they are shooting at me. Thankfully, we get saved by Brenner, who Will decides to stand for the rest of the game. I swear to God, Will would ask, what would Brenner do every time his toast is ready in the morning? The plot basically goes around fixing everyone's problems by force until their solutions become our problem, and then we use excessive force. Along the way, we meet a schizophrenic girl, an evil military man, and what I can only assume is the average Redditor. Yeah, turns out subtlety was also wiped out alongside most of the world's population, because honestly, you spend two seconds with someone in this game and you can tell, oh, they're a massive piece of shit. In terms of character writing, it's okay, it's fine. I played all the Advance Wars games, and what we took away from those games is that Andy does not know what an airport is. And you know what? That's fine. That's completely fine. Set us up with a G.I. Joe-esque story for the first two, and the three is kind of like a weird mid-ground where we try and actually explain some things. And you know what? That's fine. But sometimes we do need to kind of explain why we're throwing massive amounts of troops at people, and is this war really justified? Instead of just saying, I feel bad, or, well, it happens and we have to do this. And the game does just enough. There's a lot going on here already. There's war crimes, warring nations, the world being Swiss cheese, this giant tower, and this giant plague. Is this game just ace combat? Like, they could explain these in extra missions, except they don't. They just call it training and use live rounds on each other, I guess. This is expensive. The gameplay. The gameplay. It's, it's, 
It's advanced force with four more units. I think the flare is good for making pushes in smoke. Look, I don't have enough experience in multiplayer to talk about the actual meta because I, I don't have any friends who play advanced wars. Let's talk about how the plot gameplay is structured. Here are some great highlights of the gameplay plot. You don't get CO powers until halfway through the campaign. You play at most five COs, three of which you don't have any ability to use their powers or abilities. Oh damn, Will's depressed and in no shape to lead the forces. Where else can I find someone that we've been learning to lead the... You just talked to Will? He's better now? Yeah, it's not like I wanted to play you for at least one mission. The enemy plays like a massive bitch in some missions, which makes the gameplay extremely slow. I'm looking at you, Waylon Flies again. Otherwise, the campaign is pretty good. There's some really inventive missions, and it's totally not ripping off of Ace Combat Zero, I swear. From maps that make use of all the units to creative mission scenarios, all you really need to know is that there are ambush spawns and that you shouldn't get surprised, because those can accidentally kill you at some points. One final thing before we get to a verdict here. The music. Now this, this is actually insane. It's pretty great. With really good themes for each character. If the character design didn't tell you something, then the character's music will. Though, I, I will say, all the music is a banger in the Advance Wars series. Just listen to it. It's great. Days of Ruin is an odd game for me. With so much back and forth between different aspects of the game, it really leaves me wanting something that has both aspects. I want the gameplay and the kind of CO style of Days of Ruin, but I think we can ditch this art style. I want kind of deep characters of Days of Ruin and more cutscenes detailing the interactions with both characters, but we don't need to drop this self-serious to the point of kind of parody that Days of Ruin has with its characters. I don't want the AI to cheat in Fog of War. Realistically, there are two ways that this game can go. If the reins of the series is still in IS's hands, they can do, still do conventional things, but because of their experience with Fire Emblem, they could add more to the world. They could make it deeper, although that might come at the cost of a weird tone that kind of comes with that. If it just goes straight to way forward, I would expect we'll just brighten the game up Classic G.I. Joe all day. Not, not the modern G.I. Joe stuff. I, I don't think we need The Rock in Advance Wars. Maybe. <laughs>